What's up guys, this is Balash from Racing Brick. This is the famous, or shall I say notorious, LEGO Technic Land Rover Defender in front of me. Well, okay, not the entire vehicle, only the chassis. If you ever build this set, then you probably know what I'm talking about. Don't get me wrong, I think this is a great design with tons of working functions squeezed in a mid-size form factor, but it's a challenge to build correctly. The drivetrain is complex, it basically fills the whole car. If you push it along, then there are so many LEGO gears being engaged at the same time, I think it is really close to the limitations of the system, and if there's any minor misalignment or inaccuracy during the build, then at the end you will face the famous cracking in certain gears. And even if you build it correctly, you might face the issue later, I will show you in a minute. I made multiple videos about this phenomenon and have a huge article dedicated to the possible solutions and all the other potential issues of this build. This is easily my most popular blog post ever on the webpage, and in the past years I literally received thousands of messages from people having challenges with this set. Although not all issues were related to the cracking and I was able to help most of the people, but I have to emphasize this again, there's no single bulletproof solution to eliminate the cracking. And to make it more confusing, not everyone will face it. So, how is this possible? I decided to make this video to provide you some explanation and also to do a little experiment. So this is one of my previous builds. I got this brand new set about a month ago. So first I will build a chassis and see if the famous cracking appears with this fresh build out of the box. I won't be extra careful, simply building the set as usual. And then comes the exciting part. As my number one suspect for the reason of the cracking noise is the amount of gears in the drivetrain and the possible buildup of friction and vibration, I will replace the bevel gears with these new ones. If you don't know them, they were introduced recently in the 42140 app control transformation vehicle. In my review video of that set, I did a brief demonstration how these seem to have less resistance compared to the beveled counterparts, as the contact surface with the surrounding pieces is much smaller. So, will this simple gear swap be enough to get rid of the famous cracking? Let's find out. Now, here's the chassis with the gearbox completed, the build has all the important structural parts, I stopped on page 182. We know well that this model still works the other way around, so the engine tries to run the fastest in the highest gear in high mode. In low, all gears run fine, even fourth runs ok and the vehicle rolls. Now let's see the situation in high. First is ok, second is fine, third already has some resistance, now let's see the fourth gear. Yeah, as you can see the engine does not run smoothly anymore, there's a visible fluctuation in speed and the drivetrain is struggling to keep up and vibrations are building up. You can also notice the wind up effect, the wheels will rotate backwards a bit when you leave the vehicle. It also stops much sooner than in low fourth gear, but that's sort of understandable due to the higher resistance. But, and this is important, there was no cracking so far, so it is actually possible to build a set correctly without experiencing it. But, yeah, another but, it is really really close to the cracking state and unfortunately we cannot say that it runs smoothly in the highest gears. How close it is? Well, look at this. We need to push it just a little bit harder and yeah, there you go. And once it cracks, it means something somewhere inside became slightly misaligned and the effect becomes worse at lower speeds or even lower gears. I could try to go through all the possible connections, pushing everything together inside and it would probably make it better again, but you can see that the whole system is really on the edge of being properly functional. It might work, but even the slightest mistake will have a bad outcome. So for comparison, here's my previously built model that you could see on the table. It was working smoothly the last time I built it, but it was sitting in a box for two years and managed to collect some dust as well. The result? Awful cracking in high force, same in third, only becomes better in second gear. So, a little bit of dust and probably some tension building up between the parts and this is the result. Now it's time to test the new gears. First I thought I could use the old version for the gear swap, but as I would need to clean the whole thing for a fair comparison, I will swap the gears in the new build. I have recorded how it works out of the box, so we can compare. So, as you can see the set has 1 black and 9, 10, 22 bevel gears and 8, 12 tooth ones. 
That seems to be a lot for the first side, but if we take a closer look at the build, then we can see that not many of them needs or can be replaced. First of all, the black 20 tooth gear is used for the Hand of God steering, so that's not relevant. We've got a small one here on the high-low switch, two others used for the winch, again, not relevant. The steering system also uses quite a lot of bevel gears, but they don't affect the drivetrain's performance. Then there are some others that can be replaced. Here's the drivetrain only, and as you can see the ones driving the differentials have to be bevel gears, otherwise they don't work. That leaves us with 1, 2, 3, 4 20 tooth bevel gears to replace, and only a single 12 tooth one, that's not much unfortunately. So, here's the build with the gear swapped. This is one on the shaft of the DNR switch, driven by the central differential, then there's one after the high-low switch, and one big and one small in the gearbox. There's also one here that should be only engaged when the car is in reverse, but in reality this is still back driven by the engine when it is in drive, except it will only drive that red gear in that scenario that is not connected to anything. So, all the possible gears are swapped, now let's test it. It's ok in high second, still ok in third. Resistance can be felt in fourth but no cracks yet, let's push it a bit more, and here we go, it's cracking again. Did the gear swap help? Well, maybe a tiny little bit, but that's only my gut feeling. But it did not eliminate the cracking for sure. If you want to make it crack, it's still pretty easy to do. Then what's the conclusion? As I said at the beginning, this is a great build, but maybe it tried to push the boundaries of the LEGO Technic system just a little bit too hard. It has way too many gears engaged at the same time, and most importantly, four universal joints in the drivetrain that might increase all those vibrations significantly. And unfortunately, the new gears did not make the improvement I was hoping to see. Yes, I know some of you never ever experienced any cracking, it can be built and played carefully, although you will still feel significant resistance in higher gears. At the same time, you can still make it crack relatively easily, so there's no easy and definite fix for this issue using only parts from this set. The solution could be a redesign, and it's actually already done by the community. Building instructions for the Pimp Up My Land Rover project are available on Rebricable.com for free, and it has a very impressive improvement list. Does that one work as promised? Not sure, but please let me know in the comments if you want me to build that one and compare to the original. Please also share your experience with the Land Rover, give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, and don't forget to smash the subscribe button with notifications turned on, as very exciting new LEGO videos are coming soon. See you next time, bye bye!